the king becomes king. Every man who is born to be a slave doesn't know Satan. It's in effect an elitist religion. It's only for the best, for the strongest, for the most successful. It's not for the timid or the weak. And so uh, by that virtue alone it won't have a large following. What you say was a Christian man, so I don't care what people else say, you know. I know for a fact that they have lost a lot of followers, so we have been giving them a fist in the face. How do you feel about what happened to the church? Well, in a way, I think that Christianity in Norway deserved it, you know. It, 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 in the beginning, it was, you know, it was not something uh, the Norwegians choose. It was forced upon them, so you can say that, you know, that's a thousand years ago, but, you know, but I, I wasn't sad or I wasn't really happy either, but, uh, I mean, in a historical point of view, Christianity deserves, you know. And I think you know, society creates extreme people. It's like with, uh, you know, a free democracy usually deserves its leaders, and it's also, it, I, I would say, it usually also uh, deserves its outsiders. If every metal band wants to be more extreme than those that came before, then burning churches certainly took things to a new level. But these actions say less about metal's theatrics than they do about Norwegian cultural sensibilities. Resentment towards Christianity in Norway stretches back a thousand years to their Viking ancestors. In any case, the majority of metal fans, including myself, could never understand or defend these extreme actions. Gives you a little bit of a, a taste of what Satan means. I just love that part where he's like, Satan. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary, dude. I'd be like, uh, yeah, interviews done, thanks for your input. Yeah. Got... And what's interesting about Gaul from Gorgoroth is he actually, uh, he uh, came out so he's homosexual. And that was a huge thing in the black metal scene because it's known as a very, like, heterosexual, heterosexual, um, subculture but uh yeah when he came out it just uh, no one said anything and i kind of wonder about that did something happen to gorgoroth where it split into almost two different bands with the same name for a little while yeah yeah oh what was it um and that's where frost comes from too yeah it? because when they played Valk and it wasn't under the gorgoroth name it yeah, was under yeah. a different name yeah and uh just and, and then it just kind of makes me wonder when he puts like almost all men on the crucifixes like that one picture with like the guy's penis like right by yeah. his face i was like oh Actually, Ruth and I know this guy who was whose friend was at the filming of this. Oh yeah, okay. And apparently, he was being told by another member of the band everything to say. It was actually a really scary, tense moment because the guy was like threatening him. Oh, threatening him done? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was yeah. Kind of a messed up scene, apparently. Interesting. Wasn't yeah. he threatening the guy from Gorgoroth? Yeah, actually. Oh yeah, no, it was another guy from the band who was telling the guy from Gorgoroth what to say. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, the church burnings uh, in the context of Norway is not just in Norway. Uh, I know a couple people, I don't know which churches, but that happens in Edmonton as well. It's just not as well known. But yes, extreme, and uh, for, the, for the majority of metal fans here in Edmonton and around the world, uh, we don't usually support that. That's kind of extreme behavior. Okay. Uh, this is a band of Dark Funeral. I was just going to show some lyrics and maybe play some music that represents Satanism um, in more of a less stereotypical light. Uh, so this band is from Sweden, uh, and I'm going to be playing the title track off of their Diabolus Interim, which means Devil Within. And so you can just look at the lyrics, read them, take it all in. Okay, I'll just... <laughs>
Uh, but again, notions of kind of empowerment, this liberation, uh, you know, I am the king, I am the demon, um, I'm in, in control and I'm in power. And then again, with that kind of, uh, kind of uh, social Darwinism, so only the strong can believe in Satan and the weak don't know anything about Satan, obviously. <laughs> So another aspect of uh, black metal which really intrigues me is the whole notion of depression. And uh, this came about in, I'd say, the, the late 90s. And so obviously by the artwork they're kind of uh, playing and embracing certain notions of suicide. Uh, so this even brings it to a more extreme level uh, when it comes to misanthropy, nihilism. And again, just uh, a lot of artwork uh, represents isolation uh, in terms of um, kind of, I don't know, uh, landscape, landscape artworks and stuff like that. Um, cutting wrists, being alone. And so what kind of distinguishes depressive black metal from kind of your standard black metal is uh, extremely <coughs> shrieky vocals that uh, they almost sounds like they're crying. Uh, so very sorrowful, anguish, full of pain, and transformed into a temporary primordial state, so you're almost like an animal. Uh, Temple of this slowed down, there's maybe more symphonics included in depressive black metal, repetitive use of the minor chord, uh, so a lot of dreariness and kind of an interrupted descent into despair, there is no way out. Uh, focus on thoughts of suicide, loneliness, isolation, uh, and kind of the futility of human endeavor, is this life really worth it, type thing. Okay, so I wanted to play a little bit of, of uh, this, so I brought uh, a band Life is Pain, and this is the song called Negativity. It'd be fun if it would be called Optimism. Um, okay. <clears throat> desire to whitewash everything has just gone so well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, you know, and so, because I know I follow the punk scene, uh, yeah. you know, the, the 1980s punk scene where they they have recordings because they have to and what they do is the, it is the performance and all they yeah. do is to And work. it is community, very like community based. It's a community based thing. And then yeah. you have this so individual, so uh, turned in yeah. um, to the point of abjection and how the abject plays into that. Yeah. And then the the 
you know, how that plays with the fact that it's a performance and it is a performative mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, in terms of, like, no, I don't know, I've never seen a depressive black metal band play. Usually it's they only do demos and they do, like, very, um, mm -hmm. they just do recordings and then they'll kind of distribute it within the black metal scene. Um, but what is really interesting with uh, maybe main, mainstream or big black metal bands is that they will play very, very often. And it is kind of that shock, that shock value, trying to get kind of enhancing that metal experience. So it's like, okay, we've all been to a metal show, but we're going to kind of, uh, you know, put it up a notch. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know, it's, it's interesting because... Yeah, not a lot of black metal bands play shows, but they do have like this elite community that they really do identify with. And typically when you go to a black metal show, it's usually at very, very small venues, and it is a small group of people. And it's usually not your mainstream or your normative kind of heavy metal crowd. Yeah. Did I answer your question on that? It kind of. Yeah. I mean, I'm just. I, yeah. Just in regards to objection, I just. It. Objection has always been a topic that has. It's very hard to kind of. Pinpoint. Or, pinpoint. Yeah. Just because it is the, 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 and the the vacancy of object. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, object subject ad abject right yeah so totally devoid and and um, you know there's a lot of discussions of, of uh, self-mutilation and self-expression mm -hmm. through making the human body less than an object making it abject but how does mm -hmm. that and, and how do those yeah. expressions of objection happen in a performative place yeah and in a performative I state. don't know much about objection of like I've never like, I know certain articles will explore that with music, but in terms of maybe how the body is played out, um, they're kind of bringing it to that primordial animalistic state. And so we're now really connecting uh, with where we came from. And I think that's kind of where the mutilation or kind of delving into these thoughts uh, is because that's been repressed uh, by society. Like, that's wrong. You shouldn't be feeling that way. But I think with black metal, they really embrace uh, those type of conditions and states. Yeah. Object. Okay, I'm gonna think about that. Kristeva has a couple. Of, okay. Yeah. Julia Kristeva. Julia Kristeva. I've heard that name before. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. On well, a more general note, uh, I'm just wondering where this whole idea that black metal, uh, the black metal lands are adopting the, where that idea that Satan was equated to freedom came from, because. Uh, Christianity is a, it's a complete inversion of what Christianity believes that uh, salvation is freedom and sin is bondage. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering what I did. Yeah, I think it comes from the more Milton aspect of Satan, and so he had the, the liberation and freedom uh, to kind of create his own army against God. Um, but what I find problematic with bands who, uh, they say they do believe in Satan, but it's like, how can you reconcile that with not believing in Christianity or kind of denying Christianity altogether when you're still believing in a in an idol type? Well, it's a product of Christianity. Yeah, exactly. But they want to obliterate Christianity, but still have Satan on their side. That's always interesting. <laughs> I've talked to a couple of black metal bands in Edmonton, and they always get really, really defensive. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for asking. <laughs> Just wanted to know, you know? <laughs> Just <laughs> yeah, but I think, sorry, but back on your, I think yeah. it's more of a Milton aspect, and also uh, with the Satanic Bible as well. Uh, you know, Satan is positioned as this very powerful leader, liberator, uh, indulge in uh, kind of um, a hedonistic way where Christians are very um, prud prudish. Yeah. What does it take to get into, like, the inner circle of black metal? Well, I don't know, and um... Like, could a band from Edmonton yeah. ever truly call themselves black metal in the eyes of St. Beerzum, or...? Mm -hmm. A lot of black metal bands uh, from Edmonton are well known overseas, uh, particularly in Europe. Not so much maybe in Norway, but kind of all around the Scandinavian area. Um, but, uh, like, what makes them... Like, a lot of bands here do not talk about Satanism. It's more of 